This is Math 151. We are looking at section 2.2 right now. And we're going to talk about limits, uh, limits of functions. And so one way to think about limits is to think about um, not the actual place, but the neighborhood around it. Limits are about what's going on, not necessarily directly at where we're, we want to be, but what goes on close to it, the neighborhood around it. It's, I think that's a really good way to think about a limit. So let me give you an example. Uh, we have some function x squared minus 25 over x minus 5. And we want to say what happens at x equals 5. If we were just plugging it in, if we were evaluating it, f of 5. Now that's that's not a limit. That's actually evaluate it. So that means plug 5 in for x and see what happens. So 5 squared minus 25 over 5 minus 5, which is 0 divided by 0, which is not evaluable. evaluatable. We cannot get an answer for that. We can't divide by 0. And it's not just the shortcoming of us. It's no one can divide by 0. It's, it's an it's a illegitimate operation. But what happens when x is really close to 5? Now that's a different question, that's a limit question. So as x gets really close to five, what does this thing evaluate to? So in other words, if I fill in this table, x is uh, 4.9 or 4.99 or 4.999. Notice this is like that work that we just did with a secant. This would be coming at it from the left-hand side, right? If you think about if five's here, 4.9, 4.99, we're getting at that 5 value from the left-hand side. We could also get at it from the, from the right-hand side. In other words, we could say, well, how about when x is 5.1 or 5.01 or 5.001? And see how if 5's here, that's getting closer and closer to it from the right-hand side. So we're going to try and squeeze to that 5 from both the left and the right and see what happens. So I'm going to grab my uh, grab my calculator here, and uh, my first value is 4.9. I'm going to say 4.9 stored in x, and now I'm going to put in that equation. That equation was x squared minus 25, and notice I'm putting that in parentheses so that uh, 25. <laughs> I'm putting that in parentheses so then I can divide it by, and I'm putting the denominator in parentheses as well, uh, x minus 5. So that's 9.9. .9. So 9.9. .9. So how about if I put in 4.99? Right, 4.99 stored in x. And again, remember uh, some of these calculators stack commands, so I go second enter a couple times. And now x is equal to 4.99. I plug it into this. 9.99. Uh, .99. Good. And uh, let's try and plug in 4.999. See what happens. I'm going to see what happens with the with the y values or with the outputs from this function. 9.999. It's looking kind of predictable about what's what's happening here. So it looks like as I get to it from the left hand side, this is five. As I'm getting closer and closer to five, this looks like it's getting closer and closer to ten. Looks like it's approaching ten. So notice. What I'm talking about is the neighborhood. I'm thinking about the things that happen around five, the thing that I want to input. And then I'm seeing then like what the outputs are with that. So that's getting at it from the right hand side, uh, from the left hand side. Sorry, let me get at it from the right hand side. So 5.1, 5.01, 5.001. 5 so 5.1, uh, 10.1. Let me plug in 5.01 and just hope I can remember the values. I think I'll be able to. Oh, 10.01, 10.1, 10.01. .01. You know, I, I mean, it, it seems like the next one will be 10.001. 10.001, yeah. So it looks like as I'm getting at 5 from the right-hand side, this is getting closer and closer to 10 as well, right? Like 5.01 is closer to 5 than 5.1. So I was getting closer to 5, I'm getting closer to 10 from both directions. I'm squeezing it from both the left and the right. 
This is the idea of a limit. Now, it's not true that this thing evaluates to 10 when x is 5. When x is 5, it's unevaluable, unevaluatable. We can't um, say what it is. But what we can say is the limit as x approaches 5 of this function appears to be 10. Again, what I'm saying is, as I get closer and closer to 5 as my input, my output gets closer and closer to 10. And it never actually gets there. Like, it can't, it can't be there. Let's look at, at Desmos. So, there's 5, there's 10. Like, on Desmos, like, look at that. It looks like it's at 10. But let's trace it along the line and see what happens when we hit it. There's a hole there. C5 is undefined. But watch those, as those x values get closer to 5, you can see those y values are getting closer and closer to 10. From the left-hand side, right? This is the left-hand side. And from the right-hand side, as it skims down, it's getting closer and closer to 10. We can kind of squeeze into it from both directions. That is what we mean when we talk about a limit. Um, even though there's, no, there's a hole there in that graph. Even though there's a hole there. And I know that you've worked, if you were in 141, 142 in pre-calculus classes, you find holes, right, by what cancels out. But now we can actually, we're not really filling the hole, but we can say where the hole's at. It's at 10. So we're not saying that it actually equals that, although it could. What we are saying is it's approaching it. Again, the, the way that I read this is the limit as x approaches 5 of this function is 10. Now we don't care what really goes on there. We just care about what happens around there. Here's an interesting idea. And sometimes uh, this trips people out when they first see limits. The limit as x approaches three of, of two x plus one. Well, you know two x plus one, that's just a line, right? Slope of two, y-intercept of one, it goes like this. When x is three, you could plug it in. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So there's 3, 7. So let's say that's, that's my function. The limit as x approaches 3 is 7. Because see, I, as I go squeeze towards 3 from the left, squeeze th uh, towards 3 from the right, this squeeze is towards 7. I also know that f of 3 is 7. Like the limit and the evaluations are the same thing in this case. That's okay. We don't really, when we're talking about the limit, we don't really care about if it's actually there or not. We just care about if it gets closer and closer to it along the way. We, well, if we were to, to generalize that, we usually say the limit as x approaches a of some function of x, x is getting closer and closer to a, is l, where l is the limit. In other words, if I draw a picture of that, here's my function. There's a, there's L, and there could be a hole there. There not be, might not be a hole there. But what's happening is it's getting closer and closer to it from both sides. As I approach A, get closer and closer to A, the output gets closer and closer to L. In other words, as X approaches A, as X gets closer and closer to A, the function approaches L gets closer and closer to L. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I'm going to talk a little more. Uh, the limit as x approaches 3 of x is 3, right? As x approaches 3, x approaches 3. And here's an interesting one as well. The limit as x approaches 5 of 7 is 7. 7 is always 7 no matter what x does. If you think about a graph of this, this is a flat line at 7. And if 5 is there, as x approaches 5, y is still 7. The output's always 7 on that. So those are two kind of little uh, constants, uh, things to think about. Okay, let's get at some, some, some kind of trickier ones. So how about the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Now the first thing that I that I try to do 
is just plug it in and see if I can evaluate it. And, and notice if I, if I plug that in, I'm dividing by zero. So right away, I can't just plug it in. So I'm going to make a, a table here. And I'm going to get closer and closer to zero. I'm going to do it from below. So negative 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, uh, negative 0 0.0001. And then I'll get at it from above as well. So like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.000. And by O, I mean 0, 1. Of course, f of x stands for sine x over x. So let's get this going on my... Hey, one thing I want to remind you, when you're dealing with trig functions, make sure you're in radians. We're not going to use degrees unless, it's, um, unless we're explicitly told that this problem is in degrees. So always assume radians. Negative 0.1. I'm going to store that in x. And again, I'm going to go um, sine x divided by x. So 0.998, about, right? I'm, I'm estimating. Uh, negative 0.01, same sort of game. 0.999998, okay. Yeah, it's you can kind of start to see a pattern start to develop. Uh, negative 0.001. 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 nines and an 8. I, I, you know, I'm not even going to do this last one. To me, this looks like it's getting closer and closer to 1. So from the left-hand side, from below, from the negative side, it's getting closer and closer to 1. So let me check, the, check what's going on, on the right-hand side. Make sure it's doing it on, on this side as well. So 0.1, store it in X, plug it on in there. 0.998. It's looking pretty, <laughs> pretty similar, isn't it? And if we plugged it in, we, we would start to get, uh, I think, some values like this as well. So this one's going to 1, 2. So it's going to 1 from both sides. So it looks like to me that that approach is 1. And actually, this relationship right here, this is a good relationship to remember that the limit is x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. That's one to just kind of have in your pocket. It pops up a lot. Let me graph that and see what the graph of that looks like. Yeah, look at that. As I'm getting closer to it from the left, look at the y, look at the y values. It's getting closer and closer to 1. There's a hole. As I get it from the right, closer and closer to 1. There's a hole. So evaluating it is undefined. But the limit as x approaches 0 is 1. Again, the limit is a neighborhood measure. Sorry the size of this changes um, when I go back and forth. I actually don't know why. I mean, I know why I'm sorry. I don't know why it changes. Yeah, let's look at another one. The limit as x approaches 9, the square root of x minus 3 over x minus 9. All right, so if I uh, if I plug this one in, if I try to plug a 9 in, I'm dividing by 0. I actually have 0 over 0 again, you know. Um, that's called an indeterminate form. So I'm going to do the limit. I can't evaluate it. So if this is the function, f of 9 does not evaluate. But let's squeeze it in. And again, the idea would be 8.9, 8.99, 8.999, 8.9999, 8.9999. Etc., and then get up from above as well. Nine and we'd shove those into our calculator. Um, I'm going to do just one of them into the calculator, um, just to you know, just to show evaluating it. So our first value was eight point nine. I'm going to store that in x, and then the uh, the function is. Again, parentheses, square root of x, close off the parentheses, so you're only square rooting the x, minus 3, close off those parentheses, because there's your numerator, divided by, and then the denominator, x minus 9. I get about 1.671322. 
So I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to make you sit there. Of course, you know, you can do whatever you want with the video, but I'm not going to, uh, to evaluate them. I'm just going to write some values in here. 1.671322, 6712. I think I said one point up here. It's point one. Point one six 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 seven one two point one six 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 seven one three. It looks like this is getting closer and closer to uh, point one with repeating sixes. Uh, and this does the same thing. And that is uh, the fraction one sixth. So I I suspect the limit as x approaches nine of this function is one sixth. Let me graph it in Desmos and see what happens. And we're approaching nine. Look at those y values. Yeah, it looks like 0.167. Oh, undefined. And then it's getting at it from below. Or I mean the y values from below. And then there's a hole there. Yeah, so that is the limit as x approaches 9. It's not it's not what it's equal to. It's not equal to anything when x is 9. But we can talk about the limit as x approaches 9, what this approaches. It feels like a little bit of hand waving, but it's it's good healthy hand waving. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Get a couple graphs up here. So here we have drawings for two different graphs. f of x looks like this, and h of x looks like this. And you probably remember from inequality work that the open circle means it's a, it's a boundary, but there's no point there. And then this point is here. So let's take a look on this f of x. Um, first off, if I evaluate just f of negative 2, I'm not doing the limit right now. I'm just evaluating. So as I'm evaluating this, if, f, if x is negative 2, see how there's a closed dot there, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is 4. So when x is negative 2, y is 4. The output's 4. That's what that, that's what that closed dot means there. Notice now, though, if I ask what's the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function? So here's negative 2. So I'm going to squeeze in on negative 2. So I'm going to get on this line and go this way, get on this line and go this way. And you notice that it looks like they converge, especially if I could draw well, to positive 2. Even though there's a hole there, it, it converges to 2. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x is 2. As x gets closer and closer to negative 2 from both sides, y gets closer and closer to 2 from both sides, even though f of negative 2 is 4. It can evaluate to a different value than the limit. Um, but also, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's negative, uh, negative 5 right here. f of negative 5 looks like it is 1. And it also looks like uh, the limit as x approaches negative 5 of the function is also 1, because it squeezes it from the left and it squeezes it from the right. That's this idea of limit. Let's take a look at this other one that I named h that I drew. Let's do two things with this. Um, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the function. Answer it for yourself. What do you think it's going to be? I'm going to squeeze at negative 2 from below, from the left-hand side. I'm going to squeeze at it from the right-hand side. And it looks like, as that happens, it gets closer and closer to 1. And if I try to go h of negative 2, it does not exist. There's a hole there, and there's it's it's not like patched by by anything in, anywhere else. Okay, let's look at this one now. H of one. Here I'm evaluating. When I plug in one for x, boop boop boop. Oh, it looks like it's two. 
So if I plug a 1 into this function, it spits out a 2. 1 is associated with the output 2. x is 1, y is 2. But notice now if I go the limit as x approaches 1 of this function, when I get at it from the left-hand side, it's approaching 2. But when I get at it from the right-hand side, it's approaching 3. They're, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are not going to the same place, so this means the limit does not exist. If they don't squeeze to the same spot, the neighborhood's broken, right? Like I can't get there, I'm not getting there from both directions. I have to in order for the limit itself to exist. So for example, uh, let's take a peek at a different graph. Um, sine of 1 over x. And let's talk about what happens as it approaches 0. Oh my gosh, look at that. Let's zoom in. Maybe we could zoom in and it can bring some meaning to what's going on. Man, it just is really dense, isn't it? It just gets, it's really dense in there. Like there's no way for me to, it actually is a bit, it's not exactly chaotic, but it's like, it's oscillating like crazy in there. Actually, if something like this happens, I'm going to have to say that does not exist. Um, let me make a table out of this and see what happens. Um, I'm getting closer and closer to zero. So 0 0.01, um, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, 0 0.001. One, two, three, four, five of them. Notice it's kind of it's bouncing back and forth. It's not really settling down. As as x is tending towards zero, this is not tending towards anything. It's bouncing back and forth between these positive and negative values. It has to approach something, and it, it's not doing it. So this would be a case where uh, both the graph and the table lead us towards believing that um, it does not exist. So if I had the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x, that's what we were just doing, it does not exist because it doesn't settle down to anything. It just starts to oscillate like crazy. So we've been talking about the limit in general, um, and I've been talking about from the left or from the right. That gets us at uh, what are called one-sided limits. So I've been doing like the whole the whole thing, like the limit is a whole thing. I'm picky about my color right now. I don't know why. So this function right here, I'll call it f of x. Like this is it. This whole this whole curve is is f of x is my whole function. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna write this the limit. All right. So notice this the notation the limit. As x approaches, that's not a negative 2. This is saying the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, from the, from the negative side. So as, as x approaches 2 from the left, well, 1, 2, 1, 2. It looks like if that's 2, that's 2. It looks like that's 2. I only have to check one side. It's a one-sided limit. And this one says the limit of, of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right. So again, that doesn't mean positive 2, that means 2 from the right side, from the positive side. And you can think of positive as like from the positive in infinity side or from the negative infinity side. Like as far to the left or as far to the right you need to go to get at it. And notice this one, as we approach, as x gets closer to closer to from this direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, yeah, that is 4. <laughs> That's getting closer and closer to 4. So these one-sided limits... This notation, uh, that's that superscript that's after it, uh, means from the left, and that superscript that's after it, that's positive, means from the right. Which actually helps us get at kind of a a little bit of a definition of limit in a way. It's not a real formal one. The limit as x approaches a of some function equals L if and only if, that's what that if with two f's means, it means if and only if. And the limit as x approaches a from the left of the function 
is L. And, and you guessed it, if we get it at from the right-hand side, the limit as X approaches A from the right is also the limit. So again, this is saying it has to approach it from both sides in order for the limit to exist. The one-sided limits can exist completely individual from each other, separate, but the limit itself can only exist if both of these limits are the same from the left and from the right. So what we can do is we can dig into like compound functions. So I'm going to define a function this way. Uh, f of x is equal to uh, x minus 4 as long as x is less than 3. And um, otherwise, it's, it's going to equal x squared if, if x is greater than or equal to 3. So like if I think about this, uh, 3's here. I'm going to put 3 here. So it's just a straight line while x is less than 3, right? So it's a straight line for a while till it hits 3, and then it turns into the rest of a parabola after 3. So let's see. Uh, let's talk about two limits here. Uh, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of this function and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, this is continuous. It's a line, right? And it's always headed towards, it doesn't have any jumps in it. And x squared, uh, parabola, it doesn't have any jumps in it either. So I'm not going to have to do the getting closer and closer to. I'm just going to evaluate them. So if I plug 3 in um, to here, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So as, as I'm approaching this from this, left side right x is less than three it's getting the output's getting closer and closer to negative one but if i get closer and closer to three from the, the positive side the x squared three squared is nine so this graph actually looks like boop and then there's a jump up to nine and it's the rest of a parabola up here so we know that this is negative one this is nine since they're not the same then the implication is that the limit, the whole limit, the two side limit as this approaches three, it can't exist because they would both have to approach the same value. And that's really when you have these compound functions, that's how you can, you can, you can determine the limit, what it is. If they, if they, if they've been the same thing, we could say the limit approached whatever that is. And if not, we couldn't. And we're, we're going to find the limit as x approaches 1 of the function of h of x. And so notice if I try and plug it in, I'm dividing by 0. Out of luck there. I could make a table. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the graph of this. And I'm approaching 1. So let's zoom out and look what happens. It looks like 1's an asymptote, doesn't it? And those, but... In this asymptote, they're both going the same direction. They're both going up forever. So as I scoot up, they're both getting closer and closer to it, but they're they're never they're never touching it. So I think that there's two ways I could I could talk about this. If I limit my <laughs> if I limit my limit to being just a number, I'm gonna have to say it doesn't exist. But since they were both going up forever, I could say it approaches infinity. I mean, you can't get there, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying it's equal to infinity. Remember what this, what this limit statement says is, it doesn't say it gets there. It says as x approaches 1, h of x approaches infinity. The bigger 1 gets, h is going to get even bigger. I mean, that's what this is saying. So we can have uh, limits at infinity. And this is a way we can kind of not really have an arithmetic of infinity, but this is a way that we can uh, bring it into some sort of valuations. How about this one? Limit as x approaches 0 of negative 3 over x squared. Let me graph that one. Negative 3 over x squared, and then I'm headed towards my x values of 0. And notice what's happening here. As I approach it from the left, it's headed towards negative infinity. As I approach it from the right, it's headed towards negative infinity. Again, there's that asymptote there. They're both going the same direction. So I would say 
<laughs> shape, sorry, shift it again. Uh, that limit goes towards negative infinity. Now, if they didn't go the same direction, uh, limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. Notice as I approach it from the left side, it heads towards negative infinity. But as I approach it from the right side, it heads towards positive infinity. They're, they're going in opposite directions. They're not tending towards the same, uh, I'm going to call it a spot, <laughs> does not exist. Because they're going to, uh, to different, different spots. All right, I want to uh, just do a couple of more examples from graphs real quick. And then we'll call it a call it a day. There we go. So this whole picture is f of x. This is a crazy function. But it is a function. Every input has exactly one output. So let us, let's play a little game then. The limit as x approaches 2 of this function. So here x is 2. We're squeezing towards 2 in the x's. It looks like that squeezes towards 1. It also looks like f of 2 is 1. Right? It's evaluatable. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. It's evaluatable at that point. Um, and the limit is the, is the same. How about the, the limit of this function as x approaches positive 7? So here's positive 7. From below, it's going to there. From above, it's going to there. And below above, I'm talking about x values, right? I mean, from the left and from the right. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like the limit is 1. It's squeezing towards 1. But if I actually evaluate this at 7, it's 3. Uh, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this function, here's negative 3. They're going the same way. I could say do not exist, but I'm going to be more sophisticated and say infinity. Uh, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the function. Well, as it approaches 0 from the left, here's 0. So as I'm getting that 0 from the left, it looks like its output is 0. It's, it's approaching 0. But as I approach 0 from the right, boop, it looks like the output is 3. And we know then that that means that the limit at that point, the left-hand limit exists, so the right-hand limit exists, but the limit itself does not exist because the left and the right, they're not headed towards the same spot, not in the same neighborhood. All right, uh, get that practice in for uh, for this section 2.2. Make sure you're posting questions in the forum, messaging me, and uh, good luck with limits. I, I I find them really fun. I hope I hope you enjoy it.